Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, October the 19th, 2023. Um, I got another comment from um, Medway Hospital Protest, uh, which I just wanted to read you, um, talking about uh, US presidents. Um, so what uh, Medway Hospital Protests wrote was... Um, she wrote, uh, years ago, me, Trump, why has the most powerful country in the world got such a ridiculous president? Now, also me, Biden, why has the most powerful country in the world got such a ridiculous president? Now, I promised um, Medway Hospital protest that I'd answer that question with a quotation, and it's quite a famous quotation. Um, that I'm sure some of you have heard of, but it's it's kind of really good and it sort of links um, with some of the astrology I've been talking about. And it's um, by H. L. Mencken, and he was writing in 1920. He was a journalist. I think he wrote for the Baltimore Sun. And so he wrote over a hundred years ago. Um, he kind of answered um, um, the answered Medway hospital protests. He wrote as follows. As democracy is perfected, the office of a president represents more and more closely the inner soul of the people. On some great and glorious day, the plain folks of the land will reach their heart's desire at last, and the White House will be occupied by a downright fool and a complete narcissistic moron. And that sort of links with my idea that uh, the president and the country are one and the same. It takes us to the idea of, you know, the medieval concept of kingship. You know, the king is the land and the land is the king. If things go well with the king, things go well with the land. And so if, you know, if it is really true that America is a country of narcissistic morons, then it seems to be quite natural that uh, they're going to elect a narcissistic moron. Um, now, I'm not saying that Biden is necessarily a narcissistic moron. Um, and I think this, this quotation was used a lot um, when um, people were thinking about Trump. Um, but it, you know, it, does, it does kind of um, show the problem. But it may not just be a problem in the United States. It's probably a, a problem in, in other countries. So that is something, something, to, something to think about. And it, you know, but it is also why, um, when I try to work out what's, what's going on in a country, I think it's important very often to look at the chart of a president. So you look at Biden's chart or Trump's chart um, to work out what is, what is happening in the U.S., um, in the UK, maybe it's slightly different because the Prime Minister is not the head of state. Um, so maybe you should be looking at um, maybe you should be looking at um, the King's start, the, the King's chart. Um, I don't know, Prince Charles. Does you know he, he perhaps reflects what's going on in the UK? Um, but uh, yeah, I won't say anything more about that. So um, the main theme today is going to be the bombing of the the hospital in Gaza um, and I you know I just wanted to quickly look at the chart of that of that bombing I spent I, I spent ages trying to work out what time it happened um, the Guardian said it was 7 30 then someone else said you know first reports Wikipedia was saying the first reports were at 7 I think 7 20 um, then the BBC said that it was around 7 a.m. And so I'm kind of going for 7 a.m. Um, if I've got that wrong, um, my apologies. Um, you know, with these bombings, um, and this missile attack, um, you know, it's often very difficult to know who did it. And the general, the general consensus now seems to be that it was a Palestinian rocket that did it. Um, and I know it, that's kind of upsetting for some people because you you don't like the idea of um, your side doing so much damage. But I think we saw we saw we saw this in Ukraine. Um, Ukraine 
has used a lot of these air defense missiles and in several occasion, on several occasions um, their air defense missiles have caused a lot of damage. People have got killed and it's taken them a few days to actually admit that it was actually them. Sometimes they don't even admit at all. I mean, it's like, remember, remember when um, those Ukrainian missiles um, in Western Ukraine strayed into Poland and I think they killed a farm worker or two farm workers. And it took, took Ukraine a long time to actually admit that it was their missiles. And in Kramatorsk, uh, quite recently, that's um, Kramatorsk is a town in, um, in Donbass, still controlled by Ukraine and a, there was a lot of people were killed when a rocket landed and at first it was a sort of a Russian atrocity and all of that but you know it, it in the end turned out that it was um, um, a Ukrainian um, air defense missile and so I mean I think that this is what's happened um, what's happened in um, in Gaza we don't know we don't know for sure but I think the consensus seems to be growing at least in the west um, but um, it was probably um, a, a Palestinian misfire so I want to look at I want to look at the um, horoscope of that um, another horoscope I want to look at um, I want to go back to is the chart of the original Hamas attack on October the 7th you know, I got a message on WhatsApp from an Israeli friend and she she was saying that there's some people are saying in Israel that, you know, that um, it was astrologically orchestrated by the Iranians. Um, but apparently the Iranians are good astrologers or some of them are. I mean, this is this is the, this is the, the theory, at least. Um, and because it, it was so successful, because because. Because astrologically it was um, it was um, it was perfect or near to perfect. So I I would question that. I, I don't think there's any real evidence at the moment that the Iranians were responsible for the attack or involved in the sorry or plan the attack. But nonetheless, I do want to have another look um, at the chart of the attack to um, consider this possibility that. Uh, someone might have planned it um, on the basis of astrology. And I, I think that is very unlikely, but uh, I kind of want to answer um, my Israeli friend um, and look at that chart again. But before I do anything else, I want to look at today's astrology. And today is um, Thursday, October the 19th, 2023. So let's, uh, let's, let's go into the chart um here we go so um i put a picture of gaza up there that's where obviously where this um this this um catastrophe happened at this hospital um but as far as the chart for today is concerned um i think in many respects it's quite good um you will see that at, so at noon today, New York, except for New York time, you can see that the, the moon is at 24 Sagittarius and the moon is making a sextile aspect to the sun and Mercury. You know, it's always good um, when the moon is making an aspect, a sextile aspect to the sun. You know, the, the masculine and the feminine are, are balanced um you know relationships relationships um should prosper you know and moon sextile mercury you know that is that's a you know great time for communicating um you know as i often say the moon and mercury are the two communication planets the moon is more about emotional communi communication and mercury is about sort of more mental communication and when they're in sextile aspect um, we don't get any any mismatch. We we say what we think, and our our feelings come out, and our thoughts come out. And you know, there's something very natural um, about the way about the way we express ourselves. Um, so, if it's something you've got to say or want to say, um, now might be your chance. But I'm not saying you have to be. You can, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you can be completely complacent, completely sure that the words will come out right. I say this because Mercury is making a quincunx aspect to Neptune. You see, there's Mercury at 25 degrees 37 Libra at noon, and Neptune is at 25, 29 Pisces um, at at, um, 
at noon. So Mercury, this Mercury quincunx Neptune, you know, Mercury is the communication planet. It's a way we're thinking. It's a way we're speaking. Um, but then it's making a quincunx to Neptune. Neptune is a planet of confusion. And quincunx is a difficult aspect. Um, so um, we might come to the wrong conclusions about certain things. Or we might see something that doesn't make sense to us. And we might straight away, yeah, jump to a conclusion. But, you know, if we see something that doesn't make sense, we just need to say, OK, it doesn't make sense. I don't have to commit myself to defining this in a particular way or explaining it in a particular way. I just have to accept, accept the thing as it is. And perhaps I just, you, perhaps we just have to deal with the confusion. Now, I said right at the beginning when I was describing today that the moon is sextile Mercury. That is good for communication. It's good for thinking. Um, it's just don't be completely sure of yourself, particularly if you've come up, if you're if you're dealing with a new situation. Uh, if there's a new situation, it's going to take a bit of time, um, a bit of time to understand it. Now, um, if you are in the Americas, the moon will go into Capricorn uh, late, very late this evening. Um, you know, if you're in Europe, America, Australasia, Moon is in Sagittarius all day long. Um, but uh, if you're in New York, um, at 5 to 10 in the evening, the Moon goes into Capricorn. And at 5 to 7, if you're in Los Angeles, um, it goes into Capricorn at 5 to 7 in the evening. So if you're in the Americas, you might experience a change. Um, um, a change this evening, you know, perhaps you're starting the evening, you know, everything's exciting, buzzing, then at a certain point, you have another look at things and you take a more serious approach. Uh, you know, Capricorn is a serious sign. Um, you move from a sort of a fire way of seeing things to a, a more earthy, materialistic way of, think, of seeing things. And, you know, Moon in Capricorn is, is quite a selfish placement, putting oneself first. Um, so, you know, maybe earlier in the day you make a lot of commitments, very nice commitments, altruistic commitments. But uh, as the day progresses, as you move into the evening, um, then suddenly you're thinking, hold on, do I really want to do that? You know, the, the thing that really matters is me. Um, and I don't say that in a, in, a, in a sort of a negative sense. We do have to think, think for ourselves. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, so if you're in the Americas, don't be surprised if this evening there is a sudden change of emphasis. So if you've got plans for this evening, um, you know, particularly of a social nature, um, perhaps you should reconsider them because there might be a sort of a change in the tide um, halfway through that makes you reconsider um, makes you reconsider what you're doing okay so that's a broad astrology for today I'm now going to look at uh, the astrology for the 12 signs so uh, so let's uh, let's uh, let's look at uh, my for my forecast for the 12 signs so here we go these are my forecasts for today which is Thursday, October the 19th, 2023. Aries. The question is, does it elevate you? Does it move you beyond the material? Does it give you a new and heightened awareness? Some things drag you down to the level of dirt and money. Other things provide a sense of the eternal. And this, perhaps, is the yardstick by which you should judge the people you come into contact with. Taurus. You can be the alchemist, changing the ordinary into the special. So if you're engaged in boring tasks, don't think you're wasting your time. By working hard, you can create genuine transformation. At first, something is tedious, but eventually you start developing real power. And with effort, comes favourable transformation. Gemini. The moon in Sagittarius makes 
a fortunate aspect to Mercury. You feel the warmth of other people and your faith in human nature is restored. Yet it's probably not a time for making decisions. Mercury, your ruler, is conjunct the Sun and is making an 150 degree aspect to Neptune. Your judgment is clouded and you might blunder into something that you can't get out of. Cancer. Things are much better than they seem on the surface. You might feel that you're not being appreciated, but actually you're having a big influence, helped by the fact that the Moon and Jupiter are in mixed reception by sign and exaltation. You know, that's because the Moon, your ruler, is in Sagittarius, which is a sign ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is in Taurus, which is the exaltation um, of the Moon. People really like you, and they're ready to give you a chance to prove yourself. Leo, things are starting to feel balanced again. You don't feel quite so impulsive, and with the Moon making a sextile to the Sun, you can have a calming influence on the world around you. It's therefore a good time to communicate with neighbours and other people who you see all the time but never talk to. Virgo, you're starting to have an impact. It has been difficult, but your intelligence and persistence can't be ignored forever. But you don't have to be in the bright lights. You can be just as effective at home as you can be, for example, at work. And if you push your point, particularly relating to money, you're likely to get your way. Libra, you know what needs to be said and your sparkling enthusiasm can make things happen. But I'm not saying that you can entirely rely on your own brilliance. A bit of talent can go a long way and a small demonstration of what you're capable of doing could be invaluable. Postponement might not be a good idea. Scorpio, today you're very sharp and there's not much that you miss. And this is especially the case when it comes to money. Nonetheless, you shouldn't jump to conclusions. Allow the facts to speak for themselves and slowly develop your case. You'll know when the time has come to move to the next stage. Sagittarius. It looks like being a great day for Sagittarians. The moon, while passing through your star sign, makes, sex, makes sextile aspects to the sun and mercury. You feel very alive and you're able to make things happen. And if you don't like the way things are going, you can force through the necessary changes without hurting anyone's feelings. Capricorn. Today, you can be very active, but in a way that few people notice. Being in different places, not announcing your presence unless it's really necessary. And what you do privately can reflect on your career. But at the time, this might not seem clear. In the process, you may have to make a few phone calls or perhaps send a strategic email. Aquarius. There's no point in wanting something if you never get it. And today, you need to focus on the one thing you want that you believe is realistically achievable. Then you can consider ways in which you can make it happen. Because right now, you have the ability and the connections to start turning theory into practice. Pisces. From a perspective of your career, or the way you want to move your life forward, you can start wrapping up some loose ends, and certain situations will allow you to close on a deal. You have the material, as well as the knowledge, and with your intuitive understanding of people's hearts and minds, you can raise things to the next level. I'm now going to turn to the I Ching. And um, as always, I ask the question, you know, what is Thursday going to be like for people watching this video? And uh, I threw three coins in the air six times. And the first hexagram I got was after completion. Um, 
number 63. After completion um, represents a time when things may actually be starting to disintegrate. Um, you know, something is done, it's finished. Um, but now what? Things are just, things are starting to sort of fray at the edges. And um, if we're not careful, you know, things could just disintegrate um, into complete, into complete chaos. So that's, that's the danger. Um, now there is a moving line in this hexagram. Um, the second line moves. And this isn't such a bad line to be moving. And, and what this line means is that uh, we might feel that we've lost something. Um, it might be an object we've lost, or it might be a financial opportunity we've lost, or you know, we, we may be worried that someone's not going to pay us. Um, or perhaps it's about influence. Maybe we were trying our hardest to keep on someone's good side, and we, we feel we've fallen out with them, or they're not talking to us, or they're not answering a phone. But there's a sort of nervousness there that something's gone. Um, you know, that sort of ties in with this after completion concept. You know, everything was fine. And then we lost something. And what are we going to do? Um, so what the I Ching tells us is that we just have to relax. Um, be patient. Because, you know, if it's ours, we're going to get it back. So... Um, if you're worried about something and you're you're just waiting for a phone call or you're in regret, you know you got you're full of regret. Just just don't worry about it. You know the I Ching actually uses a symbolic time of seven days. I don't think it's necessarily going to be literally seven days, maybe seven minutes, seven hours, whatever. Um, that's but after seven days you'll get it back. So if if you're coming into this video and you're really worried that you've lost something. Um, whether it's material, influence, whatever, it looks like you're going to get it back. And this hexagram, 63, it moves. And it moves to hexagram number five. Um, now, um, this hexagram number five is about waiting. And it, it is the idea that, you know, just, just relax. There's nothing you need to do. And I suppose that ties in with a moving line. Um, you know, um, you've, you've, you've lost something, you're worried about it. No, it's just a question of waiting. Don't, don't even think about it because you're going to get it back. Um, it's going to be fine. Um, but strangely, uh, with this hexagram, I was kind of very surprised um, because, um, you know, I recently bought... Um, um, a different translation of the I Ching by Greg Winkup, which I've, I've referred to quite a lot. Um, and um, by and large, what he says sort of concurs with the Wilhelm translation. But with waiting, he doesn't call it waiting. He calls it something completely different. Um, he's, he calls it getting wet. <laughs> and... By that he means, he sort of says we need to jump in the river, get wet, and move to the other side. And we need to, in other words, we need to, I mean, I, I don't mean literally jump into the river, you'll drown. I, I'm not literally saying that. Um, but getting wet means taking the initiative. It means doing stuff, which is in fact a completely opposite message to, um, to the Wilhelm I Ching, uh, at least on the surface. Um, but, you know, it is time. Uh, it is time to take the initiative. So you have to, you know, when you've got these two translations that I'm talking about, you need to think about what is, what's going on um, in your life because I don't know how many people are going to be watching me about at this stage, but you're going to have different priorities, different things on your mind. Um, but if there's, if there's something, you know, there's something you need to do, and it's particularly in terms of... of pleasing a superior so this might have a, this, this is getting wet plunging ahead taking the initiative um, may be particularly relevant um, in a career or business perspective when you've got to go go and do something um, show show your metal and so there may be there may be pressure there um, 
to to really take the initiative. So it's it's really up to you to to consider um, what translation you want to take. Whether you think it's about um, just whether it's going to be waiting, just relax, it's going to happen, or whether it's actually time to take the initiative. Um, you know, you need to you need to consider the question. Um, so yeah, I'll turn it over to you. Um, what what actually is the end result for today? So there's a bit of thinking for you to do. Sorry, I should have just I, I'm not giving you everything on a plate um, today. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the astrology now, um, and I want to uh, I want to start by going back to the. Um, I want to go back to the um, uh, to the um, the attack um, on October the seventh, and um, this this theory that um, it might have been planned astrologically that you know somehow the Iranians are good astrologers. Um, maybe I, it's not something I'd come across, but I just apparently people are talking about this in Israel, so I just wanted to, or some people are talking about it in Israel, so. I just wanted to address this issue um, about you know why would why would you have chosen this um, um, this moment? Um, I suppose you know the Iranians, you know Babylon, that part of the world is in, in a way is the birthplace of astrology. Um, the astrology, um, you know, in in sort of ancient Babylon was you know quite straightforward. It was quite simple. You know, it would be focusing on where sim- s- planets were in the sky. Maybe wouldn't focus too much on aspects. And I suppose what stands out about this attack chart is the moon. Um, the moon is right up there in the, in the, in in the, you know in the t- in the tenth house. Okay, it might be a waning moon, but it's it's a moon in Cancer. Um, so, assuming one was using a Western zodiac, of course, in an Eastern in a Hindu zodiac, it's still in Gemini. But the moon is very well placed, um, particularly as this attack happened just before dawn. Um, you know, I I've taken six thirty as the beginning of the attack. Um, I've seen slightly earlier time to 6.20. But whatever happened, this, this, this was a night time. The, 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 the attack started at night um, in the sense that it happened before sunrise. Um, and so the moon likes being, it, it likes a chart that's at night. So that makes the moon strong. Moon is above the horizon in a nighttime chart. That is good. Moon is a feminine planet. Um, and it's in a feminine sign, Cancer, its own sign. So the moon is really well placed. And as a, furthermore, it's in mutual reception with Jupiter. Uh, so, you know, the moon in Cancer is in Jupiter's, Jupiter's exaltation. Um, Jupiter is in the moon's exaltation. So, yes, um, I can see that uh, the moon is fantastically placed. Um, and you know, in a in a chart, the moon is arguably the most important thing. Um, so that it's it's the strength of the moon. I would say is positional. Um, you're just judging it from a position. You're not focusing on what happens next, how the situation develops from a positional point of view. It was a great chart. So. I I still don't think the Iranians chose <laughs> chose the timing, um, but I can see the logic for going for this time. The the logic for going this time, particularly um, if 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 you're focusing entirely on the short term. And, you know, the moon is also about the public. Um, so if you want to if you want to create a big splash. Um, that's it. That's, that's all you care about. You want to make a big splash. You don't care what happens next. Let's just do it. Let's just really, really um, tell the world we, we're, we're here. Um, and I suppose you could say, well, the Palestinians have been um, 
perhaps sideline for a long time. Uh, you know, Israel has been having starting to open up diplomatic relations with other Arab states. But no one cares about the Palestinians. Then you have Moon on the Midheaven in a brilliant position. That's a great time to really make a name for yourself, to really, really ha have a big impact. So I think that makes sense. Um, the problem you know, as I said when I discussed this chart before, the problem with this chart is what happens, you know, what happens next? Where does it, where does it actually, where does it actually develop? Um, and, you know, if you, if you look at this chart, what is interesting about this chart, okay, I take, if you take, I take the ascendant as the people, as, as the initiator, the, and those who initiated the attack, you would take Libra. Um, those who are being attacked, I would have said, was the seventh house cusp and set, was the seventh house. So the ruler of the ascendant is Venus on quite close to the fixed star Regulus. Um, I suppose, in some respects, quite well placed. Uh, but coming towards the end of the sign, about to go into Virgo. The ruler of the seventh house, who may be more sort of Israel, um, you know, you may disagree with this analysis, by the way, I'm just, but um, I'm just giving you my view, is Mars in Libra, you know, coming towards the end of the sign, Mar Libra, sign of its detriment, not, you know, not so good. But you move forward. Venus is about to move into Virgo. That would perhaps be the Palestinians, Hamas, whatever. Venus is um, Venus is um, is fallen in Virgo, so it's like maybe the you know nice splash, but what happens next doesn't look so good. By contrast, Mars, representing Israel, is about to move into Scorpio, where Mars Mars is Mars um, rules Scorpio, so. The positions may be about to reverse. Furthermore, the moon, yeah, may be in a great position, but it is moving to a square of Mars. Um, and also, as I said, Mars, if you want to if you want to attack, uh, Mars is on the south node, which really isn't great. So um, I don't know whether the Iranians um, sorted out the timing of the attack. I really do doubt it. I mean, I think the chart is good from a positional point of view, but if you actually move the chart on and consider the consequences of the chart, um, I don't think that's so good. Um, uh, of course, we don't know at the moment what the eventual impact of this attack is going to be right now obviously Gaza is being bombed a lot of people are being getting killed uh, this hospital is being hit uh, so the Palestinians are really suffering but I don't know what kind of time scale you're going to look, look at what is what is the impact going to be in five years time um, we just we just don't know um, my feeling is in from a perspective of looking at it in five years time that this attack is not is going to be considered not to have been um, a good idea, even though in the first, on the first day, it might have seemed brilliant. Um, brilliant, um, by the way, you know, I'm, that's not my words. Um, you know, I was just looking at the, you know, that was actually from, you know, what, what someone was saying, an Israeli was saying, but from, they were looking at it from Hamas's perspective. Um, so that's so I thought I had to just make one more have have one more look at that attack um um on um on on uh, southern Israel. I now want to switch uh and look switch charts and look at the Gaza the hospital uh, attack. So which as I said it, it does seem increasingly likely that it was a a Palestinian misfire that caused um but damage the hospital. I know a lot of people reading, watching this, are going to really strongly disagree with that. But you know, just because you know, there, are, you know, just because you don't like, um, just because you don't like Israel, um, and you're you're supportive of Palestinians, doesn't mean that uh, the Palestinians couldn't have done it. You know, it, in war, if there's a war going on, you know. Uh, 
friendly, fr you know, casualties on your side are 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 very very common, as we've seen in Ukraine, um, with the air defense missiles. Okay, Ukrainians would say the Russians shouldn't be firing um, missile that their missiles at them, but their air defense missiles have often very often killed Ukrainian civ civilians, and there is a ten temptation to blame the Russians, or in this case, to blame the Israelis. Um, so we just have to be aware of that. So I've taken 7 p.m. as the time. I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure that's the exact time. Um, I really looked, spent a long time looking, but that's what I got from B the BBC around 7 p.m. Um, although the Guardian had said 7:30 when I for, looked at when I looked at them, but I think it's I think it's around seven. Um, what? Uh, what strikes us? Uh, well, Jupiter's rising. Um, Jupiter, supposedly such a such a fortunate planet, is was on the ascendant um, when the missile or the fragment of a missile or whatever hit the hospital. Um, Jupiter was rising. Um, so, what what does that mean? How can we how can we square that with you know with you know, with what actually happened. Well, we have to look at the condition of Jupiter. Um, and Jupiter, uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at Mars and Uranus, um, there's Mars, Uranus, you'll see that, that their midpoint, uh, the Mars-Uranus midpoint is at around 12 Leo. So Jupiter was exactly square um, the Mars-Uranus midpoint. So, you know, Mars-Uranus is about bombs, explosions, um, things going off like this, um, just major accidents involving technology, um, a rocket, you know, ro Mars-Uranus would, would symbolise this kind of thing perfectly. Uh, you know, Mars is the aggression, Uranus is the explosion. And then Jupiter, Jupiter is the great release. Jupiter just makes it happen. You know, Jupiter is an expansive planet. Um, it just exaggerates everything. It just wants to, it wants to make things bigger. So when you've got Jupiter on the Mars-Uranus midpoint, um, squaring the Mars-Uranus midpoint, then that's what you get. But then why, why here? Why in Gaza? Um, well, um, assuming the BBC is correct, and at 7pm, I mean, okay, it could be, if it was within certainly a few minutes, we'd still get this effect. Um, the ascendant would have been on the Mars-Uranus midpoint as well. So, so the ascendant, that's the place. Um, that's you know that's the, or that's a place where it happened. That's the ascendant. So, having ascendant and the Jupiter on the Mars Uranus midpoint would would fit would fit that perfectly. Um, so that's that's the first point about that Jupiter, and it just it just reminds us um, how Jupiter can work. It just brings out whatever it touches for better for better or for worse. At the same time, Pluto on the mid heaven. Um, so Pluto on the midheaven, okay, something coming from the sky. I suppose that makes sense. Um, but Pluto is strongly emphasised, emphasised here, and being on the midheaven. Um, now Pluto um, is affecting um, quite a lot of people. You know, a few days ago I looked at the horoscope of um, King. Abdullah II of Jordan, and he's got his Mars at around 28, 27, 28 Capricorn. So Abdullah II has got Pluto on his Mars, difficult time for him. And of course, he's had to cancel, you know, Biden was going to go to Jordan uh, to meet King Abdullah II. He had, King Abdullah II had to cancel that meeting because of this, because of um, this, because of what happened um, to this hospital. Um, so you can see the pressure that uh, Abdullah is is under with Pluto hitting his Mars. Um, likewise, Pluto 
hits uh, the moon of the chart of Palestine. So let me just show you what I mean. Uh, here's here's the horoscope of Palestine. Um, I, I'm using a November the 15th, 1988 chart, 12.40 a.m., set for Algiers, not Palestine. This is when when it was Palestine's independence was announced or declared. It's one of the charts. I understand there are a lot of charts for Palestine. Um, so if you look at the if you look at the if you look at what's going on, there is there's um Palestine's moon uh at twenty eight twenty. You can see that the mid at, at seven at seven PM the mid heaven was on Palestine's moon. Um and also Pluto was very close to Palestine's moon. So what does what does that mean? Okay, well Okay, the moon is the Palestinian people, and I suppose in general you have got Pluto, this incredible turmoil happening um, with um, Israel's with Israel's attack on Gaza. But um, but the um, which of course is a response to Hamas's attack on Israel. Um, but uh, with the moon, with this midheaven Pluto on the moon, we may get some specifics because this moon uh, is in the sixth house in the Palestine's chart. Um, now from a Placidus, if you take if you take this exact time of 0.40, um, technically it's in the fifth house Placidus because Placidus, the Placidus uh, sixth house cusp is 0.40 Capricorn and the moon is at 28.20 Cap, Cap, sorry, is at 0.40 Aquarius and the moon is at 28.20 Capricorn um, but I would have said that that moon is so close to the sixth house cusp as to be in the sixth house um, if you were using if you're using whole sign houses um, then and you're taking Leo as the rising sign um then by whole sign it's the moon is in the sixth house so i think we can we can say whether you're using placidus or whole sign houses assuming we've got the time right um of 12:40 a.m. on november the 15th 1988 in algiers um the moon is in the sixth house um and so when you're looking at the chart of a country uh the sixth house represents for health systems um it represents hospitals um so it's kind of not surprising you know that you've got um MC conjunct North Pluto hitting hitting this hospital, uh, which is going to cause um, absolute absolute havoc. Um, aside from the hundreds of people that have been killed, um, yeah, it's going to it's going to cause um, abs- absolute um, havoc to the health system in Gaza, and I suppose there isn't going to be much of a health system left um, at this rate, um, and. I suppose in general, um, the fact that Pluto is hitting um, hitting the moon, you know, the sixth house is just, it's, it's kind of a ball about the health infrastructure, the whole health infrastructure, really. And I don't know whether that includes water and whatever. And that that may be what, what this is really all about. Um, just the infrastructure, the, the system by which people's health is protected, whether it's through hospitals, through water, I suppose electricity, not so much, but... Uh, I think that that specifically um, is how um, is how Pluto um, how Pluto is is affect is affecting it. So um, uh, yeah, so those are some thoughts on um, those are some thoughts on the hospital bombing. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to go on for any longer on that. Um, um, I. I, I think that the astrology kind of kind of fits that kind of event. Um, of course, I'm sorry it happened, and uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, we don't know for sure who was responsible, but um, um, I mean, just looking at the BBC website, there was a kind of a suggestion between the lines, as far as I could read it, that you know it was. But it may not have been Israel who was responsible for it, but we don't know for sure. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.